Hello all. Today we will be having a look at how to install Cassandra in your local machine. So this is a document which has been uploaded. Step 1 will be to download the Cassandra installer. Today we will be using the data stack Cassandra Community Edition 2.1 because uh, the Java API which we might need to use to connect to the Cassandra database uh, works with 2.1. There are much recent versions of Cassandra available, but let's stick to 2.1 for now. Go to the Planet Cassandra website, which is a community edition for Cassandra from Datastax. So this is a website. And as I had said before, you can see like Cassandra versions 3.3 .3 and above are available, but let's scroll on all the way down here. And we'll be downloading one of these versions here of Cassandra version 1.2.1. So if you have a Linux machine, you should be going for the tarball version. For a Windows laptop of 32-bit, uh, go for the MSI installer 32. And for a 62-bit machine, uh, go for MSI installer 64-bit. So once you select this, you will be starting your download, as you see here. And just wait for the download to complete. Once the download is complete, launch the MSI installer. So it will it'll take you to the Cassandra 2.1 setup. Complete the installation just like how you install any other application in your Windows. Once the installation is complete, you can verify the installation by going to All Programs. Under the Program Files, there will be a folder called Data Stacks Community Edition, and you can see all these files under the particular folder. The installation folder for this Cassandra will be in C Drive Program Files Data Stacks Community. Before we proceed further, I just wanted you to get familiar with some of the files and folders in this installation. Let's start with the op Center web interface. So this icon right here. On clicking it, it launches the op Center web interface, which is an interactive UI. The op Center is basically a dashboard and a diagnostic center, which gives details on your Cassandra cluster, nodes, and the status of your write and read request. So you can see like different kinds of visualization here regarding the cluster storage capacity. This basically is like uh, about your hard drive. You can also see details on your node about the node size, data size, and the activities which has been like performed in the node recently, and even the data which is in the node. Next, let me show you like a couple of the binary files. So I'm going to open up the Apache Cassandra folder bin for the binaries and you can see a list of different binary files right here. If you had gone through the data stacks tutorial you might recognize a couple of the familiar names here like SQL shell, node tool, SS table or and the like. So I'm just going to run node tool info right here. So it starts node tool and gives all the information regarding this particular node. Node tool status gives the current status of the node. The main configuration file for Apache Cassandra lies in the Apache Cassandra CONF folder. As you might already know, it's called as Cassandra.yaml file. Just opening up it in a notepad to see like what it contains. Setting some of these values in the YAML file can change the behavior of your Cassandra node and cluster. But for our exercise, I would recommend not to touch this file because it's critical. Now that our Cassandra installation is all fine, let's try to insert some data into the database. So for that, bring up your menu and launch Cassandra SQL shell right here. Now that you have brought up the Cassandra SQL shell, you can play around and get your hands dirty with some of the SQL commands which you have learned so far. An example script given here is to create a key space called e-commerce. As you know, key space is similar to a schema in a relational database. It uh, contains all the tables uh, pertaining to your application. So in my case here, I have already created the key space e-commerce. So let me show you like how that key space looks like. I have just given the command describe key space e-commerce and you can see like this is the data definition command which was used to create the key space and then it has also listed down the create table commands which I had used earlier to create a couple of tables called category and products. All of these commands are given in the document as well. It's just a hint to start with your final project. Now let's use this key space and try to insert a particular row into this table called products. Going back to the SQL shell using e-commerce key space. So you can see that we are currently in the e-commerce key space. I come back, copy this command, just run it here. 
So looks like uh, that particular row has been inserted, uh, which is pertaining to the product Apple MacBook. Now let's try a select query to see like uh, the data which is already in the table products. Select star from products because we are already in the key space e-commerce. So now you can see like this is the data which is already inserted in the uh, table called products. Let's move on to the second portion of this tutorial, which is the Cassandra to Java integration. Here we'll explain how to connect to a Cassandra database using a Java application through an API. The prerequisites needed here are a running instead of locally installed Cassandra, which we have already done, a Java ID like Eclipse, and a Cassandra Java API, which is downloaded from this particular URL given here. Just note that the version which we are looking at is 2.1.9. So this is the website which gives you the Java driver hosted by Datastax and uh, this hyperlink to the shaded jar will start the download for the jar file which we might need. So download the jar file into a local drive just like what I have done here. So these are my jar files and note that I have also downloaded some of the other dependency jar files like uh, Goa, Log4j, Matrix Core, Netty All and uh, SLF4j. If you are using Maven for your build dependency, you may not need to do this. The next step is to create a Java project. So I've just created a new Java project here and named it like as Cassandra Tester. And I add a new class. Create a package called Cast Test. The class called Cassandra Tester. So I'm just going to add my build dependencies. Go to Java build path, add external jars. I select all of the jar files which I had explained a while ago. Now that the Java class is created, let's do some coding. I have given a sample code here to do a basic insert and select action into our Cassandra database. So I'm just going to copy paste the entire code into my IDE. So I come here, go to my Java class, paste it. Just ensure that uh, you map your correct package name and your class name when you do the copy pasting. I'm importing the library's uh, data stacks driver code, cluster, resulted row and session. Just an overview of the code here. In the main function, we are using the object called cluster, which connects to the Cassandra database. So you might have seen that from your SQL shell that our Cassandra database uses IP address 127.0.0.1 with the port ID 9042. So that's what we'll be using right here, except that it uses the LES localhost. And the session object is used to create a connection to a particular session for our key space called e-commerce. And here we are trying to do a basic insert statement. Insert in, into a products table values of 005 for a microwave oven. Just like we had done some time back using the SQL shell. Then we try our hands on with the select statement once the insert is complete. We do a select star from products where product ID is equal to 5 which we just inserted right here. Five, and we save the values of the query return into a local variables product ID name, description and price. And then finally we print uh, each of them in different lines. So it is a very pretty simple straightforward program. Now let's try running it. Before that I would just like to rerun our select star from product to see that we only have uh, three products in the table as of now. This is to ensure that our insert query has indeed worked fine. So I'm just going to run the program as a Java application. So this is the output. It says uh, inserting into Cassandra database. I think it has gone fine because our select query has also worked fine. Uh, the product ID 5, the microwave oven, description and price is displayed. So let's now try running the SQL shell script again. And you can see that uh, a product number 5 is added through a Java application. This exercise helps you to get familiarized with the Java API to connect Cassandra and also like basic uh, Cassandra SQL scripts as well. Thank you.